I'll share you on Instagram, or if you tag at North Shore Rhea, I'll share you as well. I always appreciate you guys do that. So, you guys ready for this? Who's here excited? Woo! I'm telling you guys, this is... Woo! So I expected a little more out of that. <laughs> we obviously brought the hype crew. We flew them in um, specifically for tonight. So, um, let's go ahead and start off. I want to break down who are these people, what experience do they have, uh, what part of the industry are they in? What's their background? So let's go ahead and start off. So guys, I'm going to ask you, who are you? What part of the industry are you in? And uh, kind of what do you, ha what experience do you have that's relevant to tonight's topic? So Steve, if you want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Um, hey, uh, I'm, I'm Steve Keery. Uh, I run an acquisition, property acquisition company in Greater New Orleans. Uh, we buy distressed properties, you know, I keep a bunch of them for myself, mainly utilizing the Burr strategy, uh, also some creative financing, I wholesale a bunch of ones through that don't meet that criteria, mainly need to be rehab because I, I love that. Um, I probably not as, I don't really consider myself a property person, although that's, that's the industry I mean and what I love and the asset class that, that I like, but I really consider myself an entrepreneur. You know, I studied marketing and economics at university. But when I graduated, I didn't want to get a job, so I started my own company, and I did a few mergers and everything, and we ended up creating a pretty significant company. We had 300 staff. We listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. It was valued at half a billion dollars, which was really cool, but it's now valued at... Half a what? Well, you're going to help me next, though, because half a billion, but... It's an Australian accent, right? You might have thought that was million. But no, I just want to make sure... I thought but, that was South Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's down under. We're real South. We're real South. Down, down <laughs> so, um, but, but Changey Market, that's now worth 130 million. Oh, right? wow. So, so investing in a Changey Market, things are changing. And that happened from January. And I sold some shares in January. Really luckily. <laughs> um, Lucky timing, huh? But, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah. So. So, 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 one of the reasons I asked Steve, number one, he's our token Aussie. Not all of you have one. You now have one. Um, here's the thing is, so a few things I want to highlight. So Steve, obviously he's been living here for five years, sent from Australia. He has a more global um, view. We have, we have frequent, so Steve and I are also partners. We own the property together and whatnot. We've done some uh, creative deals. We've done some wholesales uh, deals together. I think the deal I sold you was one of his deals and a few other things like that. If I'm trying to remember them all. But, uh, and we met through these types of meetups and on bigger pockets, online, Facebook. Um, so he brings a more global view, right? You're talking about your properties. You own how many, how many properties in Australia? I own six single families in Australia in three different states. Okay, and you're um, currently considering maybe selling them why? Uh, not, not all of them, just uh, I'm considering selling one, maybe two, which I never thought I would sell them because uh, the properties aren't as good cash flow wise as in America, but they're very good capital growth and, and I like the diversification. Um, but uh, Australia doesn't have 30 year fixed uh, mortgages. In fact, nowhere in the world has 30 year fixed mortgages. So you guys here in America, <coughs> are thankful about that, <laughs> stack up that 30 year fixed debt on good assets. That's why you um, love the method. So, but, but monetary policy, right? They're increasing interest rates and everything's adjustable. So those rates are going up. So I'm considering, and I see the market changing. So I'm looking to sell one or two, pay down some debt, and um, also put some, I don't want to pay off the debt in other properties, but in Australia we have an offset account where if you put money in the bank account, it doesn't pay off the loan, but you, it basically nets out. So if you have a 300K loan and you put 300K in this bank account, you pay zero interest. But then you can draw it out whenever you want. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, I did not know that last part. Um, you can't hear back here. You can't hear back there. Is that what? Testing. Working. Uh, maybe I'm not talking into it. Is that better? Yeah. Is that okay. Better? I can actually talk into the mic. All right. Uh, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm excited about. Okay. So, so, so um, to recap what he just talked about, 30-year fixed mortgages. You do not have them outside the U.S. Uh, so. He has adjustable rate mortgages on some rentals. He's considering um, maybe, maybe selling one, pay off some debt, things like that. So Steve brings a, a global view, right? Um, and also an outside view on America. We can get very 
micro here, right? How many of you guys didn't know that 30-year mortgages didn't exist elsewhere? Before I learned about it, I was like, oh, we're spoiled, right? Okay. So the other thing is he built a very large company with his, his other business um, partners, uh, a 300, half a billion dollar, um, 300 staff, half a billion dollar valuation. 130 million. That was 130 million. He has, um, one of the things we talk a lot about is economics, right? So he can bring a very business centric, entrepreneur centric, uh, you know, he also has a lot of other asset classes like gold, silver, various things. He's a Kiyosaki fan. Um, so if you've seen me, so I post the books I read every month. Uh, if you see, anyone been seeing the Kiyosaki kick I've been on? Yeah. It's because of our conversations, okay? So, so, but, but it also, so he wholesales, he flips, he's not, he doesn't care about real estate. He, it's a commodity for him. He also has been doing the Burr method. Um, you went on a buying streak with the Burr method this past, what, last two, three? Yeah, last, last I mean, last, last year uh, I bought like 15 Burrs and I've been a little bit quieter this year. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and pass it over to Mr. Wayne. So that's Steve, right? All right, Mr. Wayne, do you want to tell us who you are? what you do, and uh, we'll dive into some of your experience to bring to the, to the table. Okay, I'm a licensed real estate broker and agent since 1968. Uh, I've been doing this over 50 years. I own several houses and apartments, and uh, you know, our company now is 32 years old. I have three designations. I uh, was a GRI, Graduate Realtors Institute, a CRB, Certified Residential Broker, and a, and a Certified Apartment Manager. Uh, I also was president for the Jefferson Board of Realtors years ago. I was president twice for the Real Estate Investors of New Orleans, the NORIA, New Orleans Real Estate Investors Association. And uh, I've been investing in real estate for years. I have done short sales, foreclosures, subject to uh, bond for deed, many of the creative financing things that you're talking about. I also have bought some foreclosures, and uh, I've been doing real estate, like I say, for 50 years. So that's the biggest thing. So Mr. Wayne Sanji here, they own, um, <coughs> so his son Butch, you guys, a lot of them, they'll come to the meetings. Um, is really running the brokerage and the property management company. You still have your foot in the business. You're still actively, yeah. you know, when we talk on the phone, you're like, oh, I'm ready. I'm looking. I'm buying. <laughs> um, so, so Mr. Wayne obviously brings years of experience. Um, he's also tied to a growing brokerage that his son is running, that he passed, you know, his son has taken over uh, property management um, between the North Shore. You have offices on the North Shore and the South Shore. Um, and he has told me some recent things that have been very interesting. Because previously, you guys were the broker that was helping a lot of banks with REOs, right? We still do. And you still do. And so we're going to dive into that a little bit tonight. Uh, I guess about six years ago, we were probably the largest Freddie Mac broker in, in town. And we were selling between 80 and 100 houses a year. And we stopped doing that simply because they started cutting our commissions and then creating a lot of demands on the real estate agents where they require them to go out and take pictures with timestamps on it uh, every week. And I couldn't get agents to do that. It, you know, they just wouldn't. If they or would, work for less money. That's yeah. exactly right. So that's why we, we stopped doing a lot of that. I do see a lot of that coming up though. I was talking to some folks the other day where I see a lot of mortgage delinquencies rising right now. And what that is, is tells you that Foreclosure is going to be a big thing within the next 12 months. I think there are anyway. Yeah. All right, I'm looking forward to diving into these topics, Mr. Mr. Leon. Right. I'm just coming <coughs> more from South Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking when I was like, these Louisiana folks are pretty accomplished. <laughs> In Missouri in 1975, and shortly thereafter that, I was managing an office with like 55 salespeople and didn't have a warm meal at home for two years and uh, lucked into a, an investment and uh, 
which the peer pressure did. I said, yeah, it peer pressured into it, you know, and and I said, well, dang, this is so good. I need to figure out how to do this cookie cutter, do it again, you know. But meanwhile, I'd taken all the real estate and insurance courses at the University of Southern Mississippi and at Rockhurst University in Kansas City. And I got lucky, uh, blessed, and uh, went to a little seminar uh, with a couple guys, Jack Miller and John Schaub in 1978. Changed my whole life. Please write both of those names down. Uh, and I went into... Uh, realtor rehab and that's what uh, <laughs> it didn't take me long to do that and I, I, I said no more continuing ed and all that I'm just going to do investment so so how long have you been investing uh, since about 1975 okay. the yeah. first house I bought was a little ten thousand dollar house and uh, I was a broker and I bought the house so that that guy could buy another house and that guy could buy another brand new house <laughs> that we just sold a subdivision to and i took my commissions from all those sales for my down payment on that house oh, wow. and the termites were so bad in that little house that <laughs> had they quit holding hands the house would have fallen down <laughs> but, uh, so, so mr leon uh talk to us about the types of deals you do uh, as an investor We've done all kinds, like these guys. I mean, we bought at the courthouse steps, pre foreclosures. Um, you got rentals, some, buy and holds. You got some short term rentals now. Uh, yeah, these guys twisted my arm. I don't, I don't like to work anymore. I like to fish. So you know, we we're letting them handle the short term rentals. Uh, Nehemiah and, so Airbnb and uh, yeah, Brett. They're doing Airbnb. some Airbnb stuff for us, you know, and they're telling me I'm going to like it. And if I don't have to do anything, I'm going to like it. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, that's so, the idea that's of this whole question. thing is um, learn to um, convert your income from earned income to capital-based income. And if you don't know it, earned income is an IRS term for money that you go and earn. And you work for it. And, and you pay, uh, what is it, Bob? Where's Bob? 15.3% more taxes on that kind of income. So I don't like paying taxes. And, uh, and, and uh, especially Social Security and Medicare, I don't like paying those. And so I try to find an income. So you work real hard at um, getting unearned income. Where I didn't say don't work hard. I said work hard at getting unearned income. But we've done everything. Foreclosures. New construction, you've done. Weird you've, deals. Mobile you know, home parks. Mobile home parks. All those things. So, so not only single family houses. Not only single family houses. Right, but commercial. that is my favorite, single family houses of, of all. If, if that's you know, not that the other stuff is not good and people make a fortune in it, but if you learn how to manage, single family houses are the easiest to manage and uh, hassle can be totally hassle free. My longest tenant was 23 years. Uh, I've got one now over 14 years. I've got a whole bunch, five, six, seven years. <coughs> so, so when I met I'm Mr. Leon, he's been. So a lot of you guys know me for doing creative real estate. He was one of my first very hands-on mentors who taught me creative real estate. When I went to his house for the first time, we're, we're driving around on his John Deere Gator to go throw the crawfish heads in the pond. He goes, Courtney, you see that, uh, well, first of all, he's like, you see that house over there? That's one of my rentals. See that one? I'm like, I'm like, ever the light touches. Like, you know, but we go to throw the heads in the pond, and he says, you see that camper? He said, I'm going to trade that for a down payment on the house. And my mind just started to expand. You want to get into creative real estate? Get around creative real estate investors because that world opened up to me, right? And and when he said go to a seminar, I went to it, right? So he said two names. Real quick, who, what were those names? Jack Miller. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Jack Miller. Okay. Jack Miller. There you go. All right. So this is Albert Lyer. I have five of these to give away. How you can become financially independent by investing in real estate. So, that was one of the first books I read before I got my broker's license. There you go. So, um, so 
here, here's one of the things, Mr. Mr. Leon, um, he's going to be sharing. And look, first of all, uh, any guys ever heard of Steve Train? You guys heard of Steve Train? How many views did Steve just text you that your video from your interview with him is? Well, he texted me about three weeks ago, and it had uh, 18,000 views in 28 days. And, and, and since then, it's up to uh, another nine or ten thousand in the last couple of weeks. If you do Leon Johnson real estate and look at the hour and a half uh, interview with Steve Train. So if you go to Courtney10k.com, the top right link is our YouTube channel. All four of these gentlemen have been on one or more uh, RIA events where they've spoken. Um, let's go ahead and go to Adam. Who are you? What you do in the industry? And let's talk about your experience, my friend. Uh, Adam Johnson. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, Adam Johnson. I was trying to buy a little time to think of what else. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, so first of all, father and son sit next to uh, each other. That's trouble in itself. <laughs> it is. It's trouble most of the time when nobody's looking. <clears throat> um, no, Adam Johnson. I've been doing this. Obviously, I mean, grew up around real estate. Um, grew up around a lot of creative things. And I think October, October 11th will be 20 years, I think, since we bought our first investment together. Um, oh, there's so many different directions to go. A uh, lot what, of what transactions. Do you mostly, what do you mostly do these days? Let's start with that. Uh, we started doing a lot of hedge fund deals um, and working through a lot of package deals. So we're going to talk, that's one of the reasons I brought Adam is to talk through specifically because that's a big thing affecting our, uh, this economy. Talk to me about how many deals you've done. In total? I don't know. Somewhere Ballpark. 12 to 1500 maybe. Um, so, so Adam's your volume guy. Okay. Uh, Adam, if you're not familiar with him, he's been on Bigger Pockets, Steve Train podcast, different things like that. You've had six-figure months in the wholesale industry, you know, multiple times in the wholesale uh, industry. He's doing deals nationwide, uh, obviously with hedge funds, various things like that. So, options, um, uh, options, options, options with hedge estate. funds. Um, he's done a lot of creative deals. He's done flips, new construction, short-term rentals, buy and holds, obviously. My idea here, you guys understand that we have a little bit of variety on the, on the panel, okay? I'm going to ask some questions now, and I'm going to have them kind of share, and then at the end, my hope is to have a little bit of time to have you guys ask some questions too, but I'm going to try to dig what I can. So here, based on some of the things, what is something that you have seen a shift um, in your neck of the woods? What have you seen shifting in the market right now? Wait. Yeah. You want to go first? Let's just keep it close here so they can hear. One of the things that we have seen, and I think this is going to change, we have seen a lot of bidding going on with purchasing of residential real estate. Um, it's not uncommon today to see a house selling for several thousand over asking price. And I'm talking about in this area over here. I specialize in the Mandeville, Covington, uh, Beta Springs area. Down, you know, that's that's primarily where I work, and I see a lot of things going on. Where I mean, I would have never thought if we put a price of two hundred thousand on a house that that house would sell for two forty-five. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, but it's just like everything else. What governs the price of everything is supply and demand. And right now, we don't have a lot of inventory, and that's the biggest problem. So when you don't have a lot of inventory, what happens? Prices go up. That's the biggest change that we have seen. And that's been going on now for the last couple of years. Recently, have you been seeing, are you still seeing those bidding in, in the recent last month or so? In the last month or so, no, not as much. Yeah. Another thing that we do is, you know, computers are wonderful. We have a chance to see a lot of statistics, particularly in the multiple listing service. And right now I see a lot of things happening like we did not see in, in months ago, and that's prices are, are coming down Reductions. people are people are reducing their prices and when you see like like in my area that i work in over here on the north shore uh 
when I can see 40% of the active listings that have been on the market for 30 days I have got price reductions, that tells me something. People are getting a little antsy. They're getting worried about what's happening. And, and you and I see it every single day when we go to the gas pump, you go to the grocery store, and what Courtney was talking about with insurance right now. I mean, I think we're in for some rude awakenings in the near future down here, and, and insurance is gonna be one of them. I, I have had two of my own personal houses have had insurance companies that I had insurance with that pulled out of the state. And right now, our insurance agent has got me a, a hazard policy, but we had to go with Louisiana citizens for wind and hail. And I mean, prices are going up incredibly. And, and the problem is rents will not survive these prices. Uh, a few months back, we're going to go to Steve next. A few months back, I got quoted in my first news article with NOLA.com. <coughs> I was so nervous because it was an hour-long phone call with the reporter, and it was a two-sentence, and I was like, what are the two sentences going to be? <laughs> like, um, but the article was talking about 61% of NOLA area people, 61% of their income goes toward housing costs. Wow. Mortgages, rent, that is not sustainable, right? We don't have the economic growth in our area like California's or you know Austin, Florida's to really be able to handle that, right? And so you we can't if all of us who are in the buy and hold, we know we can raise our rates right now. But how long can they afford it? When they're getting hit at the gas pumps, the grocery store, you know, they're getting hit everywhere. So what do you see Steve? I've, like like both been using the last like two weeks, I've been getting a bunch of phone calls from sellers who uh, listed on market and they're freaking out because they've been there like 14 days, 21 days, they've got an offer. And it's obviously ridiculous to like, they're not ready to come for a cash offer like that. That's not really going to be a deal for me at this point. But I find that really interesting that like they've gone from a super hot market and people are used to, uh, as Mr. Wayne said, they're used to getting multiple offers, you know, and people waiving inspections. And they're like two weeks, three weeks in and they're freaking out. And, and I find that really interesting and it excites me because you know, just wait till like things change a bit more. You know, um, so that that's been really interesting. I've found that we've started using things like when we're speaking to sellers, we're like in this market, and we're like with the interest rate rises and the insurance rises, and I'm hearing people going, mm hmm, know. you know what I mean? And like, and, and, and that's a change because it's always been like it's hot, it's so hot. Everyone like thinks they got gold, and I like I, I stole this from Mr. Lee on one of your presentations, and I, I train our guys on this. Like you said. We don't buy houses with cash. You buy our cash with your house, right? And and that's been Ooh, hard. I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah, but no, I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but we, we say that one more time. Guys. So yeah. you don't 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 buy houses with cash. Get them to buy your cash with their house. And that that's how we. Sink in a little bit. That's what we do. You know, we deal in distressed properties. So you know, we when we're speaking to people, we're not like we 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 push them away all day. Like, we're like, hey, you should listen to a realtor. You know, hey, you should rent it out. Hey, do you have family? Does your family want this house? And like, uh, you, you be real soft and you close those doors for them because the, the people that like go, oh, listen to a realtor, they're not gonna be a deal, right? So, but when you do that, the people that sell, they, they want your cash, you know? So they're, they're trying to buy your cash with their house. And that's in the distressed wholesale, you know, bird sort of world, that's what you want. and. I'm just seeing it turn. It's real early. It's real, real early. It hasn't turned, but it, but it, I feel, I feel it coming. Yeah. You're looking at the downhill slide. Get a little, yeah, a little, little, little like get a little, little vertigo, right? Um, yeah. Is that what they call it? Yep. Yeah. What are you seeing, Mr. Leon? Uh, I'm not looking too much. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you, can you give a brief story of what you saw in the, um, in the river? I was gonna say he sees a lot of rainbows and browns. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind sharing that brief story real quick? Oh, about the two yep. guys? Yep. Oh, I was fly fishing the other day, and it's a stream, where, a beautiful stream where... See, this is the quick version. Wait the fish or actually, whatever. I'm just kidding. I'm catching a bunch of fish, you know? And these two young guys, sharp-looking young guys, um, they look good getting off the bus kind of deal, you know? <laughs> they got all the equipment and everything, and... They come down and I'm catching fish and they're not and they keep edging closer and one of them says, uh, what you fishing with? And I said, soft tackle. 
And he said, salt, tackle. And I said, no, salt, tackle. And uh, he said, whip out his phone. We're this deep in <laughs> He said, let me Google that and see if I have any in my fly box. So that tells you didn't know anything, you know, about fly fishing. So if somebody gets within three feet of me or ten feet, I'm going to start asking them questions. And you should do this too because it's good practice when you're sitting across the kitchen table. I do it at the gas pump. I'm going to talk to the guy on the other side, you know. And it's pretty amazing about that. I met a guy the other day uh, that I bought his sister's house. This is my parents' house that he grew up in at the gas pump. Yeah. But anyway, I said, where are you guys from? They said, oh, we're here local. And I'm thinking, they're local. They don't know how to fish like this, you know? He's in Branson, Missouri. I'm in Branson. And then, uh, so y'all here from here originally? Yeah, we're we're here. I grew up with high school. What kind of work you do? Oh, we're realtors. And I said, oh, you guys, uh, y'all list and sell houses and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, that's what we do. And so then I say, well, what do you think about this market and the interest rate? And one said, well, if you quit watching TV and uh, people just quit watching TV and quit worried about all that stuff, it's all going to be fine. <laughs> and I'm thinking, ooh, you're <laughs> and, and then he says, then I, I kept asking him a little questions and, and, and he said, uh, well, you know, we've gone from seven days on the market to 17 days on the market, so it's it's still really good, you know, it's not a, not a problem. And I asked them a couple more questions and they were getting a little uneasy, I could tell about it, you know. And, and do you know, they did not ask me where I was from, that I want to buy a house. Do you think I'd list a property with them? They should have been asking me all about me, you know, and, and uh, where are you from? Enough to help them catch a fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, so, and it's getting to be pretty amusing to me. And so I say, well, you know, guys, really, you know what allows me to be down here fly fishing? It's real estate. And they never ask me a question or anything. It's pretty, pretty crazy. So the point so here they, is... But they, they don't understand what's about to happen, I don't believe. I think they're, you know, about to hit a brick wall and they don't even know it. I, I dealt with in one market property recently. My significant other is buying through with the realtor on, you know, on market properties. And um, we walked a property, photos had it furnished, it was now vacant, been sitting on the property at this point 40 plus days. The agent had said there was an open house, we looked at zero offers on the property so far. Yeah. Many price reductions, all this stuff. And um, we submitted an offer, it was less than asking. The realtor completely declined it and we actually don't believe they submitted to the owner, they said, you know what, they're, they're teachers. They deserve more than they deserve to get closer to asking and all this stuff. And honestly, we had asked some questions and we don't think they submitted it to the to the seller. But in his mind, he said, in their listing, this house is you know, priced just right and all this stuff. And they're really defending their ability to list that property. But here it is sitting 40s. Here we are. We made two different versions of offers on that property. It is now undergoing, I think, two price reductions and about another 30 days on the market. The problem is they're still going off comps that are three months old. Okay. And things have changed in the last three or four months. Right. So can I make a point about something? Uh, if those of you that can run a financial calculator, double check me on my numbers. If y'all want to grab them and pull them out real quick like, um, I'll so give you a number. A few people in the audience familiar with them. Look at a, look at a $100,000 mortgage, 3% interest, but 360 payments. Um, if you don't know what a financial calculator is, um, I would encourage you to learn it. It's something I use for creative financing and private money lending. It's the number one tool I use to structure my creative deals. 360 and payments, 3% interest. My private money deals. $100,000. And you want the payment? $421.60? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now just change that interest rate to 6%. So this is a $100,000 mortgage, 30 year going from 3 to 6% interest. Yeah, so while she's looking that up, it's going to be 600 and something dollars. It's going to be $660 and what? 599.55. 599, 6%, 360, 1,000. 599.55. Okay, 
So y'all thinking about inflation right now, what are they saying inflation is running? 8%. 8%. What do you think inflation has done on mortgages in the last uh, six months? And mortgage inflation, okay? So it went from uh, 421.60 to 599. What's the difference in that? Take, take, take that amount and divide it by 421.60. <coughs> And that's mortgage inflation. You probably never heard that term because I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I'll take 180 to buy it by 2016. What's that? I don't have my calculator. All right. All right. 181, whatever, divided by 421. 42%. Uh, oh, yeah, 42%. So 42% yeah. increase. increase in the cost of a mortgage. From 3 to 6%. 3 to 6% is a 40, 40 whatever percent that's, increase. That's just principal and interest, not counting that's counting insurance. Taxes and insurance. That's not counting taxes and insurance and everything right. else going on. That's just what I term mortgage inflation. Okay? And it's going to get way worse than that. And then one other quick thing, let's say you were buying a three uh, had a three hundred thousand dollar loan at three percent. Your payment's going to be about eighteen hundred and something. And and if it goes to six percent, what kind of loan could you get for that same payment? It's like twelve hundred, uh, two hundred thousand dollars loan. So it drops. So their ability to afford. So That's called shrinkflation. They put less chips in the bag for the same money. <laughs> So, so here are some takeaways. Number one, not all realtors or real estate agents are dealing in today's numbers and advising their clients. Now, there are some who are, right? Like, I, I, I work with realtors all the time. I was just at a real producers event uh, last week. We, look, some of them are. They're saying, hey, you got to get with today, the day of uh, multiple offers, you know, you know, all these things, quick days on the market. They're not all there, right? So number one, you got two different types of uh, beliefs out there. You have some sellers who are stuck in yesterday's numbers. You have some sellers who are getting with the program today. Those are some things to kind of pay attention. Anything, Adam, you want to add that you've seen? Um, just talk about the hedge funds. To back, well, and we've seen uh, appraisals coming in a lot lower in the last six weeks too. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Captain. Uh, sounds like y'all are seeing some of that too. Um, the hedge funds have been interesting. Most of them are as sporadic as the realtors are. No offense to anybody in the room, um, but but like they, it's like they don't know what to do, um, and so we're seeing them adjust, like even to the point of changing offers after inspections, where they come back and they're like, like we had one in, <clears throat> where is that Florida? Is that was an Orlando one, and um, and it's a relationship that exclusively buys from us like with that hedge fund, like they only buy with us. <clears throat> and we're seeing them come back in some cases and say, well, at first it was um, the rehab budgets went up because that was the easiest one for them to manipulate fast, right? So they could change their offer based on, oh, our rehab estimate came back twice as high. Um, so that was the first one. I think they were buying some time to change some things for what was coming. And now we're seeing where they'll change a few offers we're seeing their cap rate that they buy at go up because so they have to get a bigger discount that's right all right so here's the next question and we want to kind of keep these brief so we can keep going through is is there anything that you've stopped doing as an investor is there anything that you've stopped doing in this shifting now that we're talking about these are the things we're seeing is there anything you've stopped doing in this shifting market um well i haven't stopped buying but i've definitely slowed <coughs> down Right, so I bought 15 birds last year. I've only done two birds so far this year. So, you know, and and I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing that. Like, like also, I think any advice you hear, you need to like factor in your own personal situation. You know, but me, I just saw the market start to shift, and I didn't feel I needed to move at that speed. You know, like I, I you put off the gas. Yeah, like I, 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 the properties were getting better, rents were going up. Like I didn't just feel I needed to be aggressive. You know, if I wasn't in the market, I'd probably be getting in the market still. But uh, it gave me some time, so I paused a little bit. Um, you know, those those interest rates going up. I, it's just obvious to me the market's 
changed and changing. But to be honest, I didn't really know where it's going. And I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm still buying, I can still buy, but like I'm underwriting, you know, with higher interest rates, um, you know, being more conservative on my on my ARVs. Um, so I just, I just really slowed that down. And uh, I, I, but I'm still, I'm still marketing like hell, because I'm, I'm wholesaling more, because I wholesale as well. So I just, I just switched from buy mode to wholesale mode, and my engine's still running. And I will, at some point, switch into the next mode. Anything else you guys have stopped doing as an investor? Well, not, not so much stopped doing. What we have done is we, with our sellers and with our agents, we try to get our people to, right now I'm telling them to get their house in order. And what I mean by that is check, the, check their insurance policies. Make sure that they eliminate any debt that they can. You know, and, and I always call bad debt things like credit card debt and, consumer debt. and you know, consumer debt, automobile loans, things like that. I, I think, you know, all in all, all the houses we have, that you know, mortgage is a good debt if you generate cash flow from it. So, you know, exactly. So that's what we did, but we haven't really stop doing anything we're just trying to get people to wake up and, and see what's coming I'm not really doing anything different but I'm concentrating on something more that, but it's something I've been doing all along <clears throat> is when I buy something I want to make sure that I have good financing on it um, and, and safe financing that's a big deal big and, difference uh, you know, uh, Steve was talking about in Australia, the five-year deal. Well, there's a ton of that in America where people go get these five-year commercial loans and the banks say, well, we're going to revisit the interest rate in five years. Mm -hmm. I've seen times when they don't renew those loans. And what are you going to do if you've got a bunch of those things? And, if, and I would encourage you to do whatever you can do to get out of those daggum five-year deals. I've had a bunch of them myself, and I've had some one-year ones that's come due when the interest rate went from 10 to 18 percent. You get real creative in getting out of those things. And uh, you say everyone on time to fa pass real fast. Oh yeah, you get a note with a lawyer. Yeah, the fastest time period in your life is between the time you sign that note and it comes due. Uh, you know, so, time speeds up. So, but, Mr. Leon's been one of the first ones to talk to me about a balloon. A balloon is. You know, you might have a 30-year loan, but it may have a five-year balloon where all of it's due in five years or they revisit that. I can tell you right now, Mr. Leon told me balloons are for... Clowns. Why? <laughs> so, so look, let me just tell you this. Now, just look at this scenario. Um, interest rates are going up, right? If you bought a piece of property and you didn't have good cash flow in it, and... Uh, that five years comes along, even if they renew it, you could find yourself in negative cash flow. And I think there's going to be a lot of people that that's doing that's going to happen to them, yep. and especially with the double whammy of the insurance and all the other Property things. Property taxes going, going up. up. Maintenance going up, you know, mm -hmm. air conditioning's cost more, yeah. can't get parts, <coughs> whatever. So, so uh, <laughs> you know, I've said for years, and some of you have heard me say this to ad nauseum, you have two houses side by side, uh, exactly in the same school district, same quality, built side, same filters, everything side by side. One can be a great investment and the other one a horrible investment. And the difference is? The finance. The finance. Yeah. So just good, safe financing. So one of the things, guys, look, those balloons, even in my creative financing deals, I'm trying to stay away from balloons because here's the thing is, if you bought a deal in 2020 with a with a two-year balloon, would you be smart? Right now, right this year. Okay, but okay. Let's say you bought it in 2018, and then 2020 was your balloon, right? Things are going up, right? But what if you bought one in 05, and it was coming due in 08? You would look like you know not the smartest person in the room. Here's the thing: is balloons, especially short ones. I'm not looking to do anything less than 10 years. A 10 year like. Like, to get a deal done, I, um, Steve and I walked the property and I made an owner finance offer for a 30-year note with a 10-year balloon. I did not want to do sooner than that because I didn't, I don't want to make future promises I'm not sure I can keep. And look, I'm not real confident that I can, you know, bet on tomorrow's, you know, what that's going to look like. So be careful.
on the 10 year, when, when, when are we talking about when we look to get out of that? Oh, so we're talking about, yeah, like in, in trying to build in plans sooner rather than later. We're saying if we do a 10 year balloon, we'll do it, but like with, by year six, seven, eight, we're already saying don't, don't leave it to that last minute. Because yes. then you've got no options. If you start earlier, it's bad. So time, one of the things to stop doing is these adjustable rates, these balloons. Here's what I'm saying is you're pitting yourself with your back <coughs> against the wall is what you want to be careful of. Anything that you're stopping doing? Um, yeah, and I, I would give it with a piece of advice. So I think, and I'll make it quick. Um, so you guys know the last, I don't know, five years or so, like you could have a deal that was almost like you had to force it, but you could make it work and you didn't really have to have a backup plan because even if you missed it, as long as you didn't miss by a lot, all you had to do was wait a little, hang in there a little bit, and so it would work itself out. Stupid money would come out and, and buy it. Either the price of the house went up, the cost of the rent went up, or something. Um, those days are not ahead of you right now. Um, and I, I think that's the most like applicable thing for everybody in the room is, whereas you could do some, and we did, right? Like We would do marginal deals because we knew that we could work them. You right? gotta get away with some things. Yeah, like, like where your numbers weren't as tight. That's right. You were kind of you didn't have as many buyers. It's you like know senior what? year, school's a little lax, right? <laughs> like you can, you you can have a little bit in there that you know you wouldn't ordinarily just do. But now, like we look, we've looked at several houses that if you would have asked me two years ago if we'd have done them, absolutely. But maybe the layout's a little funky, or the neighbors aren't Take a quite right. So now we're like Steve, we're being a lot more picky on our flips and stuff. But if y'all are buying anything, like if you're not wholesaling it, you're actually taking title to it. If you don't have three backup plans that make sense without a miracle coming down from heaven to save you, don't do it. Like there are so many good deals out there. You have to totally shift your mind and the way you think with the, how the market shifted. And there's gonna be a lot more coming. And a lot more coming. A lot don't, more, don't get too antsy. A lot more changes coming up, guys. So what we're talking about, we're talking about if you buy a short-term rental, an Airbnb, where the numbers on the property only work at the highest level of income with an Airbnb, right? So you want to make sure you can, the numbers work for a rent long-term rental, for a mid-term rental, numbers work for a flip, you know, multiple options. Because if you get, again, that's pitting your back against the wall if it only works, you know, if it goes <laughs> one way. Or the numbers are so thin, you know, it has to do what you got to give yourself more cushion. We got away with so much. Here's the thing is you want to make sure you're being more conservative. Yeah. They mentioned it already. I'm not using six months ago comps. I'm not even using three months. I'm using, I'm looking at what is actively pending and say, hey, is, you know, the last three months, what does that compare with that? Right? If a property sold at 350, but everything pending on the same exact house is at 310, what does that tell me? Right? So I'm looking at these things. I'm not saying it's a science. I'm just saying that's what I'm looking at. Is there anything you started doing? Anything quick you want to say on what you started doing? Just started underwriting tighter. Um, you know, I'm starting to get ready for more leads. Like, I'm, I'm excited by a downturn like that. Like, like if you're dealing with distressed properties, a super hot market, that's not a good market. Like, that's not the market you want to operate in. So. Uh, I'm just getting prepared for that, you know, getting ready for more subject to deals, and so I, I'm just I'm, I'm I'm excited by the prospect of it getting worse, to be honest. We have too, and that's just uh, getting ready for what's going to happen. I think that saving as much money as you can, being as be being as liquid as you can and get ready for what's going to happen because I think that there are going to be many, many opportunities out there. More than we've seen in a long time. Anything you started doing? A little side note. Go buy your supply of food. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm serious. I'm dead serious. You'll get about 20% return on your money if you eat it all in one day a year from now. But um, I keep from starving too because there's crap going on. I, I keep in contact with a lot of people from other parts of the world. Russia, Hungary, Romania, and uh, you know, it's, it's going to get real. So you but what am I doing? Yeah, what is anything you started doing seeing this shift in the market? 
mm, just kind of hanging out waiting <laughs> and looking for low hanging fruit and I know the fruit's getting lower and lower. I was going to say, you've kind of gotten a little more picky. Yeah, I get, I get real picky. I've always been picky. you got a little more picky. Yeah. Um, as far as doing a uh, lot more intentional with marketing um, and I, I'll be honest one thing you said earlier you got to network more um, meet more people this is the time when you need a lot of people in your corner uh, raise your hand if you're in my circle of people that we talk all the time we do deals together yeah so the rest of y'all I'm Adam Johnson nice to meet you. <laughs> But, but that's why we're here, and I can tell you guys through the, the, the really, really bad stuff and the really, really good stuff, it's always better to have the right people around you, right? When times are good, you can enjoy it better. When times are bad, trust me, you want people in your corner. Can I say something? <laughs> guys, look, and I'm not getting paid to say this, but that's one sharp gal right there, Courtney. Yeah. She is one sharp gal. She runs a great deal here. But she spends a lot of her money getting educated. She had, she found out who my mentors are. She's been hanging out at their house. Okay? I mean, she, that is a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, they got invited inside. Invite her, invite her, invite her in, me, you know? I got invited inside. <laughs> but uh, look, she knows what's going on. Uh, she's up to date, and she's learning from a lot of the old guys that I learned from spending time with them. She'll go to a two-day seminar and spend the whole week with them. And uh, so she's a she's somebody that you can uh, count on, spend time with, trust, all of those things. You know, I watched her work through a, a deal that's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, she can tell you about it sometimes, the termite house. Oh, yeah. But, um, Anyway, I knew she was a star when I started seeing her working through that. And that, that does bring up a good point. Take advice from the right people, right? Like somebody who has been an agent for 12 months and they're telling you that now's the time to buy and they didn't know a thing about real estate 13 months ago, don't listen to that person. This guy has been 50 years listening to him. Listen to him. <laughs> No, so that's really important is, um, so if any of you guys follow me on social media, wanna, thank you for that. One of the big things that I'm doing, look, I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret. I'm not big on technology, but um, I'm actually What's hoping to, to launch, what? What's your IG? Uh, Courtney Fricky, at Courtney Fricky on IG. So one of the things I'm starting to share, um, I'm actually gonna launch a podcast here. I think I bought the wrong equipment. <laughs> so we're gonna get that figured out. Um, Honestly, one of the things is, uh, so I'm going to launch a podcast where when I go and I spend a significant amount of money every month, every other month to go spend a week in Tampa with Pete Fortunato, some of those guys, um, what I want to do is start sharing that on a podcast because this is my first changing market. I got in the industry in 2014 and I've done a good amount of deals and a lot of creative deals, but I don't know a down market or a changing market. So what am I doing? I'm getting around. Hold up. Maria, Maria understands because I say it a lot. Um, so here's a, I respectfully I've been getting around them because I have been a part of the group that's used to the low interest rates, right? I go, Mr. Leon, or hey Pete, or Miss Wright, what did you see when in the 70s it was going up to what was the highest interest rate you see? 18%. Hey, what did you see? Right? So first of all, be looking out for that. I'm going to be sharing about this launch here. Honestly, I'm just going to get it going and figure it out along the way, techno technology-wise. But the idea here is I want to share what I'm learning. One of the biggest things that uh, Pete actually said, Pete, I'm going through my first changing market. What do you recommend? He said, Courtney, get around people who are in the trenches and meet with them frequently. Because if, if you have to wait on reports to come in to get your data, it's too late. So what does that look like? I literally reached out to some lenders, some realtors, property managers, a title attorney, and I literally said, I will treat you to lunch once a week, once every two weeks, because I want to say, hey, what are you seeing at the title company frequently? What are you seeing? Because I'm saying, hey, I want to know, right? Or at, you know, with the, with the top producing agent, hey, 
what are you seeing with your listings or your buyers or you know are you seeing buyers completely sit on the sideline you know like, what, what are you seeing um, so those are things that I'm wanting to do because I, that's what I'm starting to do second thing that uh, one of the things I'm stopping to do is I'm being very careful with uh, large rehabs I'm a re recovering flipper right because that's earned uh, earned income right but the reality here is I'm being careful with that because how long will it take you to get through that rehab to then be able to go ahead so, uh, you know be able, you're betting on those future values well those are changing I'm not saying you don't do them I'm saying you need to have enough of a discount so you can have enough of that needle to come down that you still be okay um, let's uh, start to start to land the plane here is there anything that you're starting to do to defend yourself? Um, let's talk defense here. Is there anything that you're doing to defend yourself in this market? You know, Mr. Leon's buying food. Um, I, I, I got, I got, I, I got a delivery of an MRE today, four weeks worth, and, and I, I concur. Oh, 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 look, look, you know we're laughing here, but raise your hand. Who here is literally stocking up on food? Buying seeds. She's buying seeds. Look, I know it sounds funny, but, but it is literally something that a lot of wealthy people, a lot of people that I know, um, that they're doing. Not going to be bad. I mean, am I right? Uh, I also mentioned obviously like selling some of the variable interest debt uh, adjustable, uh, Nikki is American, uh, we call it variable in Australia. So uh, adjustable interest debt, so selling some properties to do that, obviously building reserves. Um, some other advice I got which I thought was really good and I'm actioning now is building credit lines. So someone who had been through downturns, he said like all the credit dries up and get the credit lines established now when I'm looking to get a commercial line of credit uh, using my primary residence as collateral against it. Um, so home equity line of credit? Yeah, it's, 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 technically it's a commercial loan, but just, but yes, essentially, essentially yes. Um, uh, and I think just having those lines, you can get big lines on your business, you can get 10, 50, 100K, um, get that now. They, they can close in a recession, like that has happened, but they don't always. And get it now while you can, be ready, have the power. Anything you guys are doing defensively, especially on the investing side? Not so much on the investing side, except stockpiling money and uh, increasing your HELOC if you have one on, on your house. Mm -hmm. uh, those are main things, but I agree with Mr. Leon when he said about getting food. We, it, It's kind of funny, if you would come to my house, you'd see in my garage, my wife just picked up, I don't know how much water and, and things like this that we, we are starting to stockpile some food. You hate to think like that, but you have to. People that have money and that can afford to do those things, do it now while you still have time. And at today's price versus tomorrow. As far as water, water is like the price of water bills and everything is going up. I want to say this as humbly as I can, um, but I'm not doing a whole bunch that I haven't been doing for a while. I've been expecting this to come for quite a while, maybe too long, you know, three or four years. And uh, so I've just been making sure that any loans that I have are super safe. And uh, when it comes... What, what do you mean by super safe? Well, long term, no balloons, um, <coughs> low interest rates. Uh, I do have a couple of balloons that were 10 years out, but they're interest only, and they were given to me by an 81-year-old guy. And uh, they're interest only, 6%, which is perfect cash flow kind of deals, you know. Uh, and it's on properties we bought way below market value. But um, safe in the fact that uh, no balloons, uh, and I, I have just about every one I have is owner finance deals that we bought. They have no due on sale clauses in them. I have a right of first refusal to buy the loans back uh, in the case that they ever want to sell them. Um, uh, they have, uh, uh, they're the sole security, um, the property is the sole security, they're, you know, they're non-recourse loans, um, not that I would ever want to screw somebody out of something, you know, that's not the idea, but it's kind of to protect yourself, um, and, um, you know, just some things like that written into those notes, you know.
No, I want to, I want, if they're going to sell those notes, I want the first right to buy those notes. And, um, you know, it's just good long term, easy, safe financing. Safe financing. You know, Adam, anything you're doing um, defensively? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have extra backup plans to backup plans to backup plans. Um, it was crazy, like in 08, I mean, I sailed through it easy breezy because uh, we we kind of saw that coming. We traded out of some stuff, um, consolidated some stuff, and then so when 08 hit, I mean, we were we were ready, right? Like that's it, probably a little ready a little early, but we were ready and <clears throat> breeze right through it. And then in 2012, I lost everything, right? Bad business deal, and times were good, but one of the things that I did wrong was I violated one of my principles, right? And and you need to create those principles now, just like in your personal life and like with your health or with your whatever, right? Your relationships, you have certain things that you will not go outside of. You have your parameters. Set those now and stick to them, right? That's a big thing that we're doing is we, I want backup plan upon backup plan so that I don't get in a situation where I lose everything again. Right, like that's a that's a really important. I'm probably too defensive a lot of times, but <clears throat> those principles will save you from a lot of those headaches that some of us have gone through. Hopefully, you don't. Um, one of those was signing personally. I remember having a personal conversation with myself, yeah, and, and I, I remember like to this day I'll never forget it. I, I was sitting at the table at the closing table, and I told like our whole agreement. We talked about not signing personally. But it wasn't the contract or anything. We showed up to the lawyer's office. It's already in there. The lawyer is conveniently at lunch. So we're dealing with the secretary. And I, they were like, it would be a really big deal to change that. And I remember thinking to myself, I never defaulted on anything. But that was the one. Okay. So, so here's one thing I want you to take away from this. During a changing market, wealth transfers, right? You guys heard of that? Mm -hmm. Anybody know someone who got wealthy in 08 mm -hmm. or in another market? When you're in the game, and this has become from someone who's ambitious, this is my first time in a changing market, here's my mindset. When, just because I'm in the game does not mean I will automatically be the person who receives that wealth transfer, right? It will not happen you know, automatically to you. It has to happen by design. It's called a transfer for a reason too, not a wealth creation. <laughs> yes, another a big part to this. So if you do not have a plan for how you are going to defensively and offensively take take action during this time, it's not just going to happen by osmosis. Okay. So if you haven't been taking action up to this point, if you haven't had a plan up to this point, like again, you're not just going to oh. Right? <coughs> Because what I'm learning is in 08, there was people who were in the game who either one of two things happened. Well, one of three things. They either made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, or were in survival mode the entire time. So at the end of the day, guys, if, what is your plan? Do you have a defensive plan? How am I going to protect what I have? And then the office offensive plan, which I'm going to ask you, what are you preparing for? And what is the thing, you know, Mr. Wayne, you're talking about stacking up some cash and being liquid. What are you, what are you hoping to see? Or is there anything that you're starting to do because you want to go play on the offense? Is there anything you're looking to buy during this time? Is What are you looking to do? I'm looking to do a lot of owner financing and subject to. That is my biggest thing that I'm so buying. 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 Yes. Buying yeah. with owner. Okay, so buying with owner financing or and, subject to. And subject to. That that's my biggest thing. So that's you're you're saving for. cash for like down payments, catching things up. Where do you plan to find these? On market, off market? Uh, partially right here. Okay, hold on. Do you guys see what he just said? He's looking to buy these deals right here. So if you have an owner finance deal or a subject to deal, you have a buyer right here. Anything else you guys are looking offensively, you're going to go on the offense for? Yes, and I, I, I agree with him on the owner 
finance, buying owner finance deals. I didn't say loans were bad. One thing you have to do is not ever buy anything your tenants can't afford. Write that one down. Don't ever buy anything your tenants can't afford. And that means everything with little cash flow. And the wealth transfer that you guys have mentioned is going to come from the lender to the borrower. The borrower is getting the wealth. The lender is losing the wealth. And if y'all want to ask me about that in a minute, I know you want to end this, but I would, right now, I wouldn't care if I owned, owed 10 or $15 million in safe debt. Now's the time to own, or to owe safe debt. Now is the time to owe a ton. Versus owning notes. Versus being owed, because if you're owed, that wealth transfer is leaving you and going to that borrower. So, for example, we were talking about this at dinner. If you're locked in at that 3% interest, and where are interest rates today? You're hoping they default so that you can then get that asset back, right? And, and the point is, when you pay those dollars back, you're paying them back with cheaper dollars. That's what the U.S. government is using this inflation for, is they owe so much money, they want to pay it back. That's how they're cutting it. They're paying it back with cheaper dollars. And, and uh, a dollar today is worth a lot more than a dollar a year from now, or 10 years from now, or 15 years from now. So in effect, what you're doing when you're borrowing money and doing it safely, you're shorting the American dollar. You're shorting it. If you don't know what shorting dollars is, Think of like day trading, shorting you like know, stocks and stuff. You, you, uh, you borrow a stock that you think is going to go down and you, you uh, sell it, and then when it goes down, you buy it and give it back. So that's what you're doing. You're getting those dollars at, at and, if, and if inflation is higher than what your interest rate is, in effect, you're paying a negative interest rate. Think about say that last statement one more deep, time. Say, say, say that last that statement. Last if if you're if the inflation rate is, that what, is eight higher, something percent? yeah, and it's really more like. 18% because they took food and, and energy out of it compared to what it was in the, in the 80s. Uh, but if right now, a 12% interest rate would be just fine with me. I wouldn't bother me a bit because inflation's really running 18% as long as my tenants can pay that loan back for me. You see what he's saying? Because Some of you guys are so afraid of 6%, but he's saying I'll pay 12 all day long. I'll pay 12. It makes sense. I walked into, eight, so, so that you, you're getting paid two percent. I walked into a class one night at Rockhurst College. We had a guest speaker, and uh, he cut as a fine, real estate finance class. We had about two hundred people in the class, and he said, uh, "And the interest rates were about ten percent. How many people in here would pay ten percent interest on a good investment? Everybody in there raises their hand. You know, how many people would pay twelve percent?" You know, quite a few people still raise their hand, but a few less. And how many would pay 15%? Maybe there was 10 people in the room. How many people would pay 50%? Mine was the only hand up. And he said, why would you do that? And I said, well, if it's a super short-term deal, if it's uh, I'm buying way below market value, um, and I'm not going to hold the loan very long, I'll pay 50% interest, annualized interest. He said, I want to see you after class. So that guy and I went together and bought four million dollars worth of real estate in the next eight months, and then he screwed me out of four hundred thousand dollars. So, so the lesson is what you do. I had a four hundred thousand dollar seminar. Um, so, so, so here's the thing: is multiple safe debt, high interest rate. That part is you have multiple strategies. Any, any, uh, anything that you are preparing for? Surprisingly enough, we're actually gearing up for more deals with these hedge funds um, just because they're not doing exactly what they were doing three months ago and how many hedge funds are you working anywhere. with i think we have 14 or 15 uh, i think two or three of those are exclusively with us um, nationwide yeah um but that and surprisingly also a surprise to most people is tiny houses mm -hmm. because we have so we have a plan and then we have backup plan upon backup plan upon backup plan. 
Um, and if things are good, they're cute little chalets, right? If times are real tough, hey, I got I got a little holdup place for you, <laughs> right? They're they're very versatile. Either tiny Instagrammable house on uh, to millennial or someone downsizing. This is the lowest it gets. <laughs> um, I'm here for you either way. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to start to land the plane here. I know we're going over time here. Here's something I want you guys to take away. Again, you need to have a plan. Be careful who you're learning from. I'm going to be the first to lead and say I have not been through a down market, and I'm going to point you to people who have. And I want to share with you what I'm learning from people who have. There's a lot of talking heads on the Internet. What is their criteria to talk? Gurus. Gurus. A camera. Their criteria to talk is a camera. Thank you. Technical. Very technical. And the reality here, though, is, man, I was listening to someone say, they were like, they were saying, get on these adjustable rate mortgages, this, that, and the other. And I'm just like, be careful who you're getting advice from. I want you to learn. I want you to, to take action. But you also, keep in mind, three things can happen. You can make money, you can lose money, or you can go into survival mode. I'd rather you thrive. So, I know we're going a little bit over time here. Is there any dying questions to ask? Again, dying questions to ask this 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 group here, this panel. You can always count more and have a question. Yeah, I want to ask about marketing you. Because I know if you're a wholesaler, you focus a lot on marketing. And you, you mentioned that working is one of the, the marketing tools, but I know that some of the wholesalers pay five, six thousand dollars for their marketing to sell the deal. So what do you do right now? I, I know that you're a wholesaler too, right? Like you flip houses. That's your main thing. And you hold too. Huh? I don't really know what the main thing is. We just do all of it. <laughs> you do all of it. So yeah, this market, what you do is just to sell the house fast. Especially with the flip. So, all right. So, so the, did y'all so hear the question? question? Yeah, repeat the question. Uh, so the question is, is what are you doing to dispo your properties, basically, mm -hmm. right? So how are you Same marketing money. them out? Yes. Um, so you know, I, I'm, sometimes I'm a really slow study, and I started off. I used to pick up the phone because I knew what my buyers wanted, right? And I knew, okay, I've got a house. By the time I get down these three people, somebody's going to buy, it, right, for the price that I put it out there at. We started doing a little more volume, right? Prices are changing constantly. Yeah. So we actually, I brought in a friend of mine who does all of our dispo. But what we found to be the best thing is get in the Facebook groups, get it like for groups like this, the, the RIA Facebook groups. And then now, because the market's been so hot for so long, what's been the problem up for the last two years? Inventory, right? Guess what there's still not tons of on the market? Good deals, or, or inventory of good deals for investors, right? They don't even have to be good deals, they just have to make sense as a decent deal. So what we've started doing is networking with the agents around our area who are not necessarily investors at all, but they work with investors, right? And so what we've done is, give you for instance we sold a house the other day that I guess we trained our people too well as buyers and it would have been a six thousand dollar deal with our our normal pool of buyers that we normally circle through so we work with what the same eight or ten for most deals um, but on this particular one it was a big project it was out of their area a little bit so we put it out there with some of our realtors and we ended up making 13 on the deal and the realtor made three um, so it's just, I think you can create a, an army of people that will go dispo that deal for you with the realtors, as long as you're priced right. Because everybody looking with the realtors is seeing stuff that you and I would look at and be like, oh. So this is off-market stuff, very clearly off-market. Yeah. We just tell the realtors, hey, look, this is what I've got to have for it. You can add 3% on the top. I'm happy to pay you. Hey, just a quick note. There's a, there's a Facebook group. Homes in Mandeville, Louisiana, for sale, lease or rent. Somehow I ended up getting an admin on that. You're admin on that? <laughs> <laughs> How are you the admin on that? Look, I swear we joined one in Kansas City one time and it said Leon Johnson approved your thing. <laughs> he is everywhere. Um, all right, you guys. Um, I gave each one another book. Um, so we have books that we're going to give away. <laughs> You're not getting, that's not yours to keep, it's the giveaway. And I want you to give a final thought. 
Any bit of final, Brian, I saw you had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you talked about prices changing in the market for, for buying and selling uh, properties. Where do you see uh, rents going, and particularly at the different levels of so low to high rental prices, because I know you do mobile homes and stuff like that. Uh, so the question was, and this is a, for the property manager on the panel too, um, what do you expect rental prices to do? And he has mobile homes, so anything from high-end rentals, low-end rentals, middle-end rentals, all of the above. I think all rentals are going to go up. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not going to you're not going to find rents going down, particularly with what we're seeing in insurance expenses and uh, taxes, repairs, maintenance. I mean, everything is going up. Even the insurance companies now are coming out sending inspectors and they're telling, you could come to my house right now and you're gonna see a new roof in my driveway that's being put on tomorrow morning because the insurance company says, if, if you got an 18 year old roof, we not gonna insure you right. unless you replace the roof. Yeah. Period. Have, uh, and you're gonna see a lot of that. Inspect my rentals. They sent me a photo of this. It was our rental. Um, it was our rental where it was a pose and some kid toys in front of my rental. They said if you don't fix yeah. this within 30 days, we'll drop you. I was like, <laughs> this? Like I'm like literally so you know, it's so simple, right? Um, but they're getting, look, we bought three properties last year. They only inspected two of them. I'm like, what is the logic of that? So here's the, you know. So with that being said, um, they're going up, but they can only sustain so much. So the question is, is there a plateau at some point? Okay. Now we're going to have to cut off questions, but because um, we're over time now. I want you guys to, to give some final advice and then give away the book. So if, there, if there's anything that you can kind of charge the group with, hey, here's my final thought, I want to drive home, and then uh, this is me delegating. If you guys know, giving away books, it's something I try to delegate every single time. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I haven't read this book, I don't even know what it's about, but I'm resonating with the title, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Now, actually, like, I think that's where we're at in the market, right? You, if you're in a boxing match, and you don't really know what's happening, which I think the market is now, it's like, where's it going, you know, it's changing. You jab, you jab, you stay defensive, you still attack. If you're defensive and stand there, you're gonna get your ass beat, sorry. <laughs> uh, you need to you need to jab, you need to attack to keep them back. So you need to jab, 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 right hook. When you when you do that jab low and you see them drop their arms, you do it again and you shove that fist so far into their head. And, and I'm not trying to be aggressive, but I'm saying that's, that's where I'm at with the market. Jab, jab, keep at it, keep watching, be cautious. But as soon as you see that thing open, just go right through it. Go right through and go hard because it's going to be opportunities. And I'm excited by it. And you're getting the book because I saw you put your hand up for the first one and, oh. and you had the question. So, so you see how look, you try to pick. Here's one of the things, fun fact on the internet there's a picture of him that exists from a fighting match. Mr. Wayne, any final thoughts? Well, all I can tell you is, is don't pay too much for your properties. <laughs> You're going to find that a lot of people that are new to investing will spend more than they should and they find themselves in some cases upside down in their property. So I, I would tell you just be careful and there's going to be so many good deals out there. Don't do anything that's borderline or that you think you're going to take some risk in. You know, at my age, I don't like risk. I, mean, I don't have that much longer to, to risk the things. So. One thing I'm going to recommend if you're going to ask a question or anything with the book, ask them to raise their hand because I usually always say it and then all of a sudden everyone says that while I'm counting at it and pay attention. Well, here's a book by uh, Zig Ziglar. Now, Zig Ziglar is no longer with us, but he was a very good motivational speaker and did a lot of sessions in the New Orleans you know, area. Anybody know him or hear of him? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to re-give it away, because uh, she, she got a book here. Oh, okay, right. I'm sorry. Uh, CJ, do you first come on and get it, CJ. Try to use it back in the room. Um, 
you heard me say it earlier, but don't buy anything your tenants can't afford. Okay? That's a biggie. You know, and it's, it's a simple little saying, but if you go buy that and, and look at the numbers, then uh, you'll be fine. Even if there, there has been times in 08 in a part of the areas of the country where rents did go down. Right now, I don't see how they can because of the housing. There's a housing <laughs> shortage. There's a renting shortage. Um, but um, uh, it seems like it's just low inventory in, yep. in our area. And I have people just messaging me all the time. Right. Hey, do you have anything to rent in this area or whatever? Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I don't see them going down. I'm trying not to raise rents too much right now. I have a different philosophy than most people because, number one, their gas just went up. They're having to pay more to get back and forth to work. Their food just went up. They're having to pay more to put food on the table. Electric and then bills I, up. Electric bills, and then I'm going to come along and raise the rent on them. So I, I think the, the tenants are the most valuable assets, not the house itself. And uh, a good, don't need a lot of that. In a good long term, good long term tenant is 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 good to have. Um, I don't know this guy uh, personally, but I, I I have heard of him. I heard he cusses like a sailor. Yeah. He does. Uh, Y'all know him? Gary B. Gary yeah. B. <laughs> he cusses like a sailor. So I I don't want to hand don't this. Don't have off. someone to say a curse word right here. He drives his points home with a lot of color. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, uh, get the fans in the back. Oh, there he goes, right there. That's what he needs to do. That's what he needs to do. I delegated. I delegated every single time because it's not so easy to think of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adam, uh, curious to hear. I'm going to end on a little bit different note. Um, so I, I actually uh, I got to meet Gary B. in Dallas one time. Um, we had a little, like a little VIP event, and I got to go in and one of the first ones in the room where he was at, and I got to ask him a question, and it was I was really proud of myself because he said, he said "Man, that's a really good question," which I, he gets a lot of questions. Um, but I, so we we've talked a lot about being patient, uh, being very cautious, and most of all, being very prepared. Right, because the truth of it is, none of us really know what's coming. We just know that it's not going to be what it was a few years ago. Right, we're we're heading it into a different era, whatever that may be, and it's a time to get your house in order, to make a smart decision on any loans that you get, to be very careful about like the properties you are picking up. Um, but I want to sometimes being too cautious is detrimental. So the question that I asked Gary V, and this is going to be my advice uh, to close this thing out. So be very cautious, right? Sometimes that chance for a step ahead isn't worth the five you got to take if you don't get your foot on a sure spot. But when I asked Gary V, I said, Gary V, <coughs> so all the stuff you've done, I've listened to you enough, and I didn't really know Gary V. I found out about Gary Vee a week before I met him in Dallas. So this is a really weird experience because everybody else was like, Gary Vee, Gary Vee. And I'm like, Gary Vee, I've heard him, right? <laughs> and so I tried to watch some stuff of his and we realized that he's not a regret person, right? Like he just does his thing and if he's wrong, he'll say, oh, I was wrong about that. And then he's on to the next thing. Um, but I asked him, I said, out of all of your stuff, what is it that you wish you would have done more of or you wish you'd have done less of, now that you could look back at it. So be very cautious, be very patient, be very prepared. But the advice Gary B. told me was that when you know you're right, push your chips in. So that's a really- When you know you're right, really impactful push your chips in. So, you wanna figure out who to hand that out to? Um, please don't throw it out. <laughs> it was like it was. Throw it like a bouquet. Yeah. Um, okay, you went there for that, okay. I'll see that lady once you read that book. She did volunteer pretty good for it. 
What's your name? Yeah, you. Tracy. Tracy? All right, come get it, Tracy. All right. So, excellent, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. The first book I ever downloaded to my hardcore account. Oh, okay. So, when you know you're right, put your tricks in. One of the best pieces of advice I got when I was first getting started said, Courtney, get some experienced people in your corner who can soundboard your deals. Troublemakers, I knew it. <laughs> to soundboard. So what am I doing? I'm getting around experienced, gray-haired investors to soundboard. What are you doing right now? What do you stop doing? What do you start doing? What are you preparing for? What are you doing defensively? That's a big part of knowing when you're right and pushing chips in too. It ain't just what you think about it or feel about it. It's what all of your collective group has shared with you. I'm always looking for the people that are smarter than I. What are they doing? People that I respect. Um, so let me say this. Have a plan. This is not going to happen to you by default. You need to go into this by design. One of the things I'm doing is I'm planning, up to this point, maybe 40 or so percent of the deals I've done have been creative. I'm expecting that number to drastically increase. So you're gonna hear me talk next month on August 9th on subject two deals. I have Mr. Leon in my ear talking about safe debt. A part of that, I do, you know, I do have some opinions on, on subject two deals. I can tell you right now, other RIAs, brokerages, you know, you name it. Hey, everybody come talk on creative finance, come talk on creative finance. Hey, we want to learn about that. The time is coming when creative deals. So if all you've ever done is buying traditionally with loans or with cash, creative finance is a skill set. So not only am I engaging my, I went and bought, Mr. Lee and I was telling about some books that I'm reading right now. If you follow me on Instagram, I share the books that I read. I went and bought over, um, around 30 books that were written in 1980. Uh, 1989, early 1990 from creative real estate investors. Because during that time, 1970, 1980, 1990, they did a lot of exchanging. Adam said earlier, he said, we traded a lot of properties, right? If you haven't heard of 1031 exchanges, this Friday, that Zoom, meet, that Zoom meeting we're having, these exchange meetings, if you guys have attended them, the goal here is to be creative, collaborative, and take an action. Problem solving. Problem solving. The reality here, you guys, if you're only walking around with being able to buy with cash or a conventional loan or you know commercial loan, if you're only, if you've been a one-trick pony, I want to encourage you to add to your skill sets. I want to encourage you again to get around people who've been through a few different cycles. I want to encourage you to get around creative investors. If you come across a deal and you're like, hey, cash and loans are not working, give me a call. I'll help you figure it out. My cards are in the back. My cell phone number's on there. I'm sorry, but my, uh, my inbox, I'm still trying to get caught up on there. Shoot me a text, right? So I'm being cautious, but I'm also knowing when I'm gonna push my chips in. There's a level here, I'm ready to start putting my foot down on the gas. I talked about how I sold a property recently. I actually am, uh, take, I'm planning to take a tax hit because I sold a property, so I didn't trade it into another one. I'm purposely taking a tax hit on some things so I can have some cash for reserves because I plan on buying. And I plan on buying a good amount of properties. So with that being said, again, have a plan. That's also planning who you're gonna learn from during this time. Um, the other thing is having multiple strategies. Get around some people, check in to people who are in the trenches who are doing volume, hey, what are you seeing? What's going on? Because here's the big thing, what I also learned is people who pivoted too late are the ones who got burnt the most. If you can pivot early, this insurance thing, and we started talking about this October 1st of 2021. I started selling some of my properties then that didn't stress test well. Now it's getting more difficult, seven, eight, nine months later. So with that being said, you guys, August 9th next month will be back here. I expect for us to grow out of this place during, during this changing market, maybe. Or there might be a lot of people who sit on the sideline during this time, too afraid. And we might just be staying here for a while with, 10 of us having a power. I don't know. <laughs> this Friday we have the Zoom call. If you go to Courtney10k.com, you can see the upcoming meetings. Tonight, if any of you gentlemen are available, I want to invite you to come to Chimes. I'll buy your beer, I'll buy your meal, whatever, even if you can stay for just 15, 30 minutes. I know it's getting late. 
to go have the meeting after the meeting. Yes, you can come up here and learn. Yes, you can come up. But to say, hey, you know, you, know, you can say, hey, Steve, talk to me about what you're seeing. Or, you know, getting to do that across the meal. These meeting after the meetings. Again, there's a second seminar that we're about to start. We're going to head here soon. You said you're going? Yes, do you mind going ahead of court and grabbing, our, grabbing the table for about 15 people? Yeah. And I'll stay and pick up here. But thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Get plugged in. Don't be an island during this time. Thank you guys. Give them a round of applause.